Uh, Mark, I don't know if you can address uh, the Huawei news specifically, but I did see a survey out of Evercore this morning that asked about top concerns for stocks. And number one was a second wave of cases. Number two was valuation. Number three was U.S.-China tensions. How much are you weighing uh, China versus everything else we have to worry about? Uh, okay, of those three issues, I think at least for consumer tech, prop, um, outside of hardware companies, uh, I think China uh, China tensions are probably the least important. And uh, you know, we're um, I, I'm I'm very struck by the data point we got this morning from uh, retail. Uh, and there's one number to keep in mind: it's 22 percent. I think this is really key. We just got a monster data point. So uh, retail sales as a whole in this country declined 22%. You, knew what gr you know what grew 22% year over year? Online retail sales. It is, a, it is a tale of two dramatically different worlds going on. And uh, I think if you have another, I, hopefully we don't have another wave, but the longer that people are forced to stay shelter in place, the stronger the tailwind uh, is going to be for online retail. So there's a clear couple of structural winners off that that we're hyper-focused on. Of course, Amazon and Shopify at the top of the list. Yeah, we, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, Mark, and your general point was uh, these companies have this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to snag a bunch of new customers as long as the experience is satisfactory. And we're, we keep asking you whether or not you think it is satisfactory enough to the point where when things do reopen, they stay with this model rather than going back to traditional ones. You know, Carl, I'm sure there'll be a little bit of a re reversion to reversion to the main, you know, reversion to Main Street. I'm shopping. I'm sure there's going to be some of that. But I, I think you give companies, uh, you know, very good executing companies, they wouldn't have their market caps and the histories that they have if they didn't execute pretty well. If you give that kind of opportunity, that kind of runway uh, for, to companies like uh, Shopify, but also especially to an Amazon, I, I doubt they blow it. And so far, it seems like they're able to reasonably meet most uh, consumer uh, demand. So uh, m my guess is that, especially if they're spending I, that other great data point about Amazon, the other really interesting one is that $4 billion that they're spending in the June quarter just to ensure safety, security of their workers and the delivery systems, et cetera. I, I think they'll close the, the, the door, close the window on uh, offline retailers, fortunately or unfortunately. They're both, they're both characteristics there. David, nearly every day this week, and today it was Huawei, there was a, a new tension between the U.S. and China. President Trump even this week threatening to cut off the relationship there. How seriously as an investor do you take these threats as, as far as they could hit economic growth at such a vulnerable point already? Or you just chalk it up to the fact that we're having an election in a few months and, and we need someone to blame for this major crisis that the U.S. is in? Well, I think that we've seen the, uh, the the point that's being made. The fact that we're talking about this and the fact that we're not talking about, you know, the, the driving is opening up in the United States. You know, we've seen a 25 percent increase in the miles driven in the last uh, two weeks as the economy in the United States open up. And because of the fact that we're talking about China, we would look at that as a risk, but a relatively small one, because the actions that would be taken would only affect a very small portion of the economy now. What we're watching really is the return of the consumer. We were just talking about that, which is, are they going to be buying more next month? Are they, are they going to take deferred purchases uh, in areas like uh, consumer durables, you know, dishwashers and refrigerators and make those purchases, do their home improvements? And our answer is yes. We expect a very sharp uh, comeback in that area. This is very different than the 2008 and 2009 recession. Its predominant impact has been on 60 percent of the people who are unemployed are in leisure, are in retail, are in education. They're in a very small portion of the economy. So when we take a look at housing, when we take a look at autos, we would expect a very sharp rise back to normal over the course of the next three to four months. That's the real story. And so to answer your question, I think China is a you know distraction uh, for political purposes more than it is an economic story. You know, we've got to keep focused on whether or not people are going to get back to work. Uh, and we think that they will. In the third quarter, we would want to see half the people who are unemployed over the last six weeks you know, get back to work. And that would be a very significant first step on the way to a better economy in 2021.